always had an interest in art. That was something that I felt like I was good at from a young age, and I just decided that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted an art degree. I didn't want to be a teacher. I didn't want to be anything else. I just wanted to learn. And I really wanted to try lots of different mediums and see what fit for me. I moved to Fergus Falls when I was 12. My dad was a bush pilot and had a, he was a business owner. When I was 12, my dad became type 1 diabetic and he lost his license to fly alone and it kind of changed his life. It was actually very pivotal to me for that to happen because I'll never forget he did something for about a year and then he sat us down one day and just said, you know, I'm just not really happy. I'm going to do this and this. You are fine and I'll take care of you and we'll all be fine, but I need to find what it is that I'm meant to do and so we can all be happy. And I actually think that that was a huge influence in my life because I feel the same way. I am currently on the road selling a line of jewelry that I started. This line of jewelry actually came about because as we were traveling for Jay and starting to do his work, we were traveling and I kept picking up stones and I, I pick up a lot of things that resonate to me and I was picking up a lot of natural materials and I was collecting these things and I liked the feel of them. I liked what they made me think of and I started to put them together in ways that made me feel good and that was in some jewelry. Smell my different things, so I might just start playing around with I think some parts, um, and I might say I really like the look of something. So what can I put together? I like this piece with this piece. And I might find another little piece that I really liked hanging off to the side. I'm a contemporary wood sculptor and I come by it honestly because my family, actually I'm the, the sixth generation person involved in the wood industry in the state of Minnesota. I'm told that my family had a millwork company in Red Wing, Minnesota prior to statehood. And they're probably rolling over in their graves seeing what I'm doing now because it's far removed from the lumber and millwork industry. I feel as though I'm taking woodwork as an art form in a different direction. Uh, the first half of my career when I was designing and building the furniture was an awful lot about uh, making the material wood doing whatever I willed it to do. It was mastering the tools, mastering the techniques, and I can make wood do anything, and I have. This body of work, the contemporary wood sculpture, it's not a figurative thing. Uh, it's more based on feeling, what makes one feel good. I like to have soothing forms, forms found in nature. And the difference between this work and what I did initially is now that it's a bit of a meeting in the middle. A vessel carved out of this. Uh, and the first thing I have to determine is how far this hollow defect goes into the log. And I can see that it's going in this direction, like so. And so what I'm going to do is uh, 
just cut a chunk off to like right where this and see if that eliminates the defect and otherwise I'm just gonna have to lay the vessel out to avoid that. I use predominantly grinders, different heads on electric grinders. It's freehand carving. I'm using the grinders because I'm after a very spontaneous fluid form. Kind of rinse and repeat, and uh, and then it's then I work down into more structured carbide and finer finer grinding heads. I use local woods now because I have to. Because when I'm carving, I'm carving when the wood is still wet. I'm also carving out of a single block. I don't glue up smaller pieces to get my carving blocks, and so I have to have big trees. And that's why I don't harvest a tree for my work. I use nothing but fallen trees. This year's been kind of tough. Hey, good news, bad news, there haven't been a lot of storms, not a lot of trees blowing down. So I use logs from fallen trees near my studio. Everything came from within 20 miles of here. So here, this piece is a piece of sugar maple. Uh, came from East Battle Lake. And it's, this is what it looks like after I have done the carving and after it's dry. I haven't built a piece of furniture probably for 15 years, with the exception of our current dining room table. I was on the river uh, in Dayton Hollow, just a couple miles south of here, with my dog. He was out swimming, I was standing on the shoreline, and I felt as though I was standing on something other than river bottom. And I was moving the silt aside with my foot and realized I was standing on a, I thought it was a piece of plywood. I ended up putting a chain on it and pulling it out of the river with my truck. And I mean, it just, it was one of those things that just kept coming and coming and coming. It ended up being about a 26 foot long plank of Douglas fir. And I took it back to my old studio, put it behind some cabinets up against the wall and forgot about it. Until we moved the studio back here, where now our, our studio's at the home. A couple years later, for Cindy's birthday, I said, I'm going to make you your table out of that board. And so I matched it together, made, made the table. I find the most interesting part of the story is, in the early 1900s, in the teens somewhere, a dam north of town failed and it took out several dams below it. And so what we think it was, pretty sure, is it was a a road plank from a bridge just one mile down the road from here that got washed out at the same time. Pretty certain that's what it was because when I was filling these fissures with uh, epoxy, those fissures were oozing creosote. So it kind of came full circle. It took a uh, hundred years since the bridge was washed out and I've made the table and so now I'm guessing this is forever where it will be because when we leave here, we're not gonna have a place for it anyway, so it's gonna stay with the house. I think for the most part, the best part of all of it is that most of the time we're on the same page. We, as far as the type of work we do. And when I say that, it's not the same, it's not the same work, but I think we look for a natural simplicity in some ways, soothing forms, and also living and working in our home somewhat reflects what we do. And the biggest 
thrill about being able to make what I do work and have this be a viable career path. This is all about me making things that I really love and then finding someone else who loves them enough to part with their money and collect it. And that is, uh, it's really humbling and it's incredibly satisfying to get that validation. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram. Online at 96.7cram.com. 